Hey, it's Susie here, out and about for Rockdown TV. And I'm in LA, and I'm at the White Hart Hotel. Is it a hotel, Max? Uh, uh, pub. Pub? White Hart <laughs> Pub. And I'm here with someone so special that I'm excited. I'm here with Max Merritt. How are you, Max? Oh, remarkably well for a man of my vintage, <laughs> as, as Wally would say. <laughs> Like a good bottle of wine, you're getting better. Oh, I wouldn't say that. I, I may be a little corked. <laughs> <laughs> We're all a bit corked in LA. <laughs> now, I've been reading, and you've got a new album out. I do? You do. And I read that it was called Been Away Too Long. Oh, that, yeah, that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was something we, we recorded back in... Well, we, we were doing a gig out... out uh, it was either Mooney Ponds or one of those places out at, in Melbourne in the suburbs and uh, a young fella came up to me he's about 18 and he he said would you mind if I hung up a microphone and uh, I thought nothing more of it and, until he contacted me about 30 years later and said uh, do you want to have a listen to it and he, he sent me a, a CD and it was fabulous I thought it was great you know and uh, I never thought any more of it until about a year ago and he contacted me said would you mind if I put it out as a you know something here uh, you know like a CD and uh, said, sure, you're not going to make any money, but uh, go ahead. And, and he did, and uh, we've got a lot of reaction from it. How do we get our hands on this? Uh, well, I, it's actually on uh, uh, iTunes. iTunes. You can get it on there, yeah. Uh, I'm not, I don't think Amazon's got it, but uh, uh, you can deal directly with him uh, in, uh, in, um, in Melbourne. Uh, and I don't happen to have his address on me at the moment, but... Uh, uh, it's gettable. Yeah. Yeah. Because I was reading that it was um, on in those days that was you know 42 years ago this master yep. tape was in storage, and that was at some um, dances that you were held at local schools like Waverley High and Ashwood High. It was where Rick Springfield went to school. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 And you get a thousand kids a night. Oh yeah. 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 A thousand kids. Well, we are on a Saturday night in the old days. Um, I sound like an old fart, don't I? Uh, <laughs> I am an old fart. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, we used to do uh, f like five gigs on a Saturday night, starting off at 8 o'clock at night. Uh, we'd already done maybe uptight in the morning uh, from 8 to 12, come home, have a bite to eat, done the village green in the afternoon, and then five gigs at night, ending up at the catcher at about 4 o'clock in the morning. The Village Green is still going because Rockdown just did a gig there yeah, recently yeah. and we had Ronnie I Charles. I saw that, yeah. Mick Peeling, mm -hmm. Marcy Jones. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. She's that's still the, gorgeous. That, that's the, uh, the the value of uh, Facebook because, uh, you know, I can still keep in touch with everybody back home and, you don't uh, miss it. You know, and remain anonymous. <laughs> <laughs> now, I was reading that you started guitar lessons, so you were from Christchurch originally. Yeah. Yep. And uh, as a 12-year-old, you had some guitar lessons? I had, I had this wonderful guy that I, I, I went to have guitar lessons of. He looked like Burl Ives. Uh, anybody that uh, yep. um, ever saw, um, uh, what was the Paul Newman movie where Big Daddy it was Burl Ives, uh, the, the big southern gentleman. Uh, he looked like him and he played banjo and, and, and uh, you know, used to pick along with me and made lessons interesting. Then I went in there one day and he said... Uh, Max, look, I'm uh, sorry, but uh, we're going to have to ha cease having these lessons. He said, uh, I'm going on a holiday at the government's expense. <laughs> and he'd been caught dealing in stolen goods or something, and so he, he was doing a bit of jail time. But it, it was a wonderful experience, and then I, 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 I gave up playing for maybe two years. So I was, about, I was about 12 at that time, so I gave up playing, and then rock and roll hit, and then I got interested in that again, you know. Uh, and uh, the rest is history, I guess. So you formed the Meteors as a 15-year-old. Yeah, yeah. 15. Mm. How did you come up with that? Like, what did you do to, to make that happen? Well, I sort of started hanging around with a, a, a group of young kids and that, and, and we used to play all these records, and, and there was an older guy that lived around the corner from me, Roly Jeffries was his name, and I was always a little suspect about him because he's an older fella hanging around with younger guys. and uh, But uh, Roly used to sing a bit, and, and he, he sort of started off uh, the idea of forming a club because what had happened around about that time, 1958, is when Rock Around the Clock came out, 
and there was all, an, a, a big riot in, in the square in Christchurch where kids are overturning cars and fighting with the cops and all that. So we thought, got to give these kids somewhere to go on a Sunday, get them off the streets, otherwise they're going to keep on getting in trouble. And uh, so we opened up the Christchurch Teenage Club and Rolly took off and uh, I brought in my parents. My dad was on the door, my mother made cups of tea and, and sandwiches and, uh, and I did the stuff on the stage. And, uh, and we kept that up until I le actually left Christchurch in the early 60s uh, to move out to Auckland uh, and then eventually go to Australia. Now, Harry and Miller Harry, yes. added you to the Johnny O'Keefe tour of 59. That's right, yeah. That was a good year because I was yeah. born that year. Yeah. All the good chefs were All in the, the 50s too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so how, how was that on that tour? It was, well, we only did Christchurch and uh, it, was, it was kind of unfortunate because um, I was still laying bricks in those days. And, uh, yeah, you were a brickie, weren't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, we, we're, we're doing, we did three shows in, in, uh, in Christchurch with O'Keefe. And uh, the first one, I used to do this thing back in the day where I'd, I'd open up with one night, the Elvis thing. Yeah. One night with you. Yeah, yeah. yeah but we'd, we'd do the intro behind the curtain. And then with, with, when I start to sing, I jump through the curtain and in front of the microphone and I have a guy a couple of guys pull back the curtain and I'd leap through and and uh, we did this we brought the house down we, we actually actually killed him and, and uh, I went to work the next day and uh, one of the carpenters came up to me at work and said you did all right last night didn't you and I said what do you mean he said well look at today's paper and he gave, put the paper down local boys steal show all right and so I go in the, that, that night to do the second show and O'Keefe comes, comes up to me and he says, uh, that was a good song you did last night. And uh, I said, oh, thank you, Mr. O'Keefe. He said, um, you're not doing it tonight. I said, why is that? He said, I'm doing it. Yep, I said, you can't do that. He said, I just did. <laughs> And so he went out and he did that. We still stole the show. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I got to say that O'Keefe never held it against me. Even when I went across to, you know, he took me on his show and, and, and uh, treated me uh, graciously and, uh, and never held that against me. Maybe he forgot. <laughs> Maybe you taught him a few things I'm saying. Now, 1960, your first album, um, Come On, Let's Go. Is that what it was called? Come yeah, on. yeah, yeah. So that was HMV? Yeah. Release that? Yeah, we, we, we actually recorded that in the local uh, radio station. Yeah. 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 In the days where you, where you didn't have headphones and uh, you know, the fold back was a speaker that was close to you, you know, that, that was the only... That was it. Yeah, yeah. And the, wa the, oh, way, the, the, way, the way that you... Where there's no sense, there's no feeling. <laughs> <laughs> I was seeing that. I was thinking I'm going to call um, uh, when you when you wanted to balance the the uh, instruments, you either took them away from the microphone or brought them closer. There was yes. no, you know. Now, there, did you back Dinah Lee on Rick Petit? Yeah, and uh, and uh, don't you know Yoko Mo? Both I of those. I couldn't believe that. We were the, we were the kind of house band at, down at Viking Records in the, in those days, and and Dinah used to come in. And we played at a place called the Top Twenty up there, and we play do lunch hour sessions yes. and. and uh, Play from one uh, from 12 to 2, then we go home and come back at night and play from uh, 8 o'clock to to uh, midnight. But uh, Dinah, who was working in a a gym around the corner from us, she'd come in at lunch times and and I knew her from Christchurch. She'd get up and sing with us and uh, and, and as we were the the uh, band down at Viking, it was an obvious choice. You know, we we backed her and. Uh, She's still fabulous. She oh, just she's did the go she's show. She's a great talent. Uh, you know, she's a hard girl though to pick songs for because everybody got it stuck in their mind that that they want to hear something like Reap Petite or Don't You Know Yoko Mo. Yeah, yeah. They, they, you know, they can't see her doing anything else. So she's been sort of typecast to a certain extent. She still looks fabulous. Oh, she's I know. Aged. I, I know. Believe it. I know. It's. Now, it's all smoke and mirrors. Is it? <laughs> I've, I've had the whatever lift here in LA. I watch TV and you can have anything done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Well, yeah, that's why I've grown this beard, you know. Hides many chins. <laughs> I don't know if I can walk around with a beard, though. The bearded lady. Now, you, you, um, you supported the Stones. 
on yeah. the 66 tour? Yeah, 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 we did. Yeah, down, down the Palais. We played at the, the Palais in at Melbourne. The Palais. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, that was great. That was a great tour, yeah. Uh, had a lot of fun on that tour. It uh, gave me an insight into what it was like to be a big star. I mean, I, you know, we never attained that sort of uh, stature as, as, you know, an act, but it was good to watch it from the inside. Yeah. So 67 was a tough year with the, the big automobile crash that you had. Mm. That was, um, it sounds to me from what I've read that it, it was pretty serious and you were all lucky to survive that. It was, it was a bit of a close call, yeah. Um, I, 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 I can't say I, I remember a lot about it. You know, I, I remember all the, the, the details, but, you know, as with most things like that, you you you, you kind of you only re, you only retain the, the, the good things that came out of it, you know, yeah. r rather than the bad things that happened at the time. I, I think mean, you were meant to be on this earth for the reason of your wonderful music. Hey, look at the the bastard. sun came out and shone on us in LA because <laughs> it's been raining, guys. Anything else, God? <laughs> So Max, one of my most favourite songs of all time, and my 20-year-old knows the lyrics, Slipping Away. Well, I'm, I'm very pleased that another, another generation or two has sort of hooked onto it, because, you know, that song's been very good to me, and I'm uh, very proud of it. Now, that was the second single off the album, is that right? Second single to be released? Yeah, Because I'm, I'm thinking it should have been the first one released. I'm not sure whether they released uh, a little easier first, or um, I, I, my memory uh, fails me. Yeah. Who was she? Hmm? Who was slipping away? Who was she? Oh, well, Thorpe used to think it was uh, uh, the gal that left me to go with Billy, uh, Jackie Holm, but uh, wasn't it? Not true. No. no. Are we uh, not going to tell anyone uh, who it was? Uh, no, it was an amalgamum, you know. Huh? <laughs> it was a, it was a bunch of people, you know. Like, you know, you get dumped on at various times in your life, and you know, you, it was a, about a general feeling, you know. It wasn't about any, anybody in particular. So we can't name her. No, no. no. I tried to get that out of Ronnie no. Charles, who a the woman that broke him was, but he didn't tell me either. A gentleman never tells. Never tells. <laughs> and you were a fine gentleman. <laughs> <laughs> so '77, you relocated to Nashville, huh? Uh, no, I, I didn't. I didn't uh, live there. I, I was living in London, and I, and I flew over, and I stayed. I, I stayed with the, the producer, Papa Don Schroeder, for about three months, and uh, we recorded an album there. And uh, it's a hard place, though. Uh, if you don't have a strong identity, uh, you know, you, you get eaten eaten up by the the, the machinery, like. Uh, the players, you know, they've already been with uh, Mac Davis, uh, Dolly Parton uh, the, in the morning before they do your session, you know, and, and, and you know, so they're using the same licks okay. that they played yeah. there on your record, and 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 they'll they'll take away all your style, you know, if you're not careful because you're, you're, you'll sound like Dolly Dolly Parton and Mac Davis, you know. Yeah. Yeah. You were you much loved. You did a tour. In Australia, I think it was 2001 with Doug Parkinson. Oh yeah, oh Dougie. Yeah. And people still talk about that tour. They they love you, miss you over there. Well, I miss going back and doing it. I, if I could, I would, and uh, I'd love it. But uh, I love that with, uh, working with Doug. Doug. Doug's a, a great Amazing. singer. I just used to love standing on the stage and hearing him open up those lungs. Oh, <laughs> we just saw him in Melbourne with um, the Bon Scott story. Yeah. Um, Hell ain't. A place to be, or yeah. a bad place to be. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he did seasons of change. Yeah. Oh, uh, look, it brought the house down. No, he, he's a wonderful singer. I mean, he, he deserves to have been heard over here. You know. He's a he nice really, man. Oh he yes. Yeah. So you were inducted, 2008, into the Aria Hall of Fame. A big moment for me, yeah. I tell you. Oh yeah, very, very emotional moment. I, I it was hard to <coughs> keep myself together that night. I tell yeah. you. Must have been. We just dodged a car here, we're, we're trying to get good light and we're in a car park and the valet's trying to park so we had to break then and <laughs> it's a bit of fun isn't it? Oh yeah. So the ARIA Hall of Fame, was it Glen A. Baker that inducted you? Yeah, yeah. that's right, yeah, yeah. What a phenomenal moment in your life. Oh, it was, it was you know, I, 
I was very emotional and and and, and uh, feeling very unworthy. You know, like uh, that's not true. No, I, but I, the, no, but I, I don't, you know, I, I've always sort of thought of myself as a sort of a journeyman, working musician. You know, like I just loved playing and. and uh, I never, never really thought about making all that much money out of it, so consequently I didn't. <laughs> uh, uh, but uh, I enjoyed the, the whole process of just, you know, writing the song and performing the song and or recording the song, and and uh, that was enough for me. And and, uh, and and getting to work with a bunch of you know great people, you know. Who inspired you to to with music? Who did you love to listen to? Well. What originally got me into into music in the first place was Little Richard. Uh, when I heard uh, Long Tall Sally, I I thought I thought it was otherworldly because uh, you know it, it, it was so different from how much is that doggy in the window, you know, and when you whop, bop, loop, bop, you know yeah. you know that that sort of manic style, and uh, and I, I I must admit I liked Bill Haley. Although I cringe a bit now when I say it, but I even at the time. yeah, but I, I named the band after you know Max Mert and the Meteors, yeah. Bill Haley and the and Comets. The Comets. Yeah, that was the reason I did that. Yeah. But uh, but I, and I loved Elvis when he was done his original, you know, like just the three piece stuff that he did. Yeah, that's all right, Mama and uh, Milk Cow Blues, you know, yeah. Blue Moon of Kentucky. But the the big influence later on uh, and which stayed with me today is Otis Redding yeah yeah beautiful yeah when, when I when uh, Jimmy Sloggett played uh, me that version of Try a Little Tennis in uh, in Auckland way back then and Jimmy Sloggett plays the sax, saxophone he? yeah he's still playing yeah I know he was playing yeah, just yeah. up um, at the Ivy you know Linda yeah. where we go yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I keep in touch with Jim a lot. Yeah, I'm gonna have yeah. to hunt him down. Yeah, we're 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 good friends. We've been friends uh, over 40 years. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and playing together over 40 years, on and off stage. <laughs> <laughs> What's more fun, off stage? <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're a grandstander on stage. <laughs> Well, Max, I'm going to wind it up because we're going to go in and have something to eat and have that a sit good. down with yeah. Max. I'm really honoured. Rockdown uh, just loves you. We, we all love you. Thanks, Susan. I'm going to try and get hold of that album of yours because I've got a little show, Southern FM, and I'm yeah. going to play it. Oh, fabulous. That's yeah. great. 88.3 Southern FM. But this is um, Max Merritt here in LA. Max is home for the last 30-something years, and we've been honoured to have him here on Rockdown TV. Thank you, Max. Thank, Thank you. you. Just love you. You're just amazing.